that I just thought, oh, man, I literally just almost died. This day just had that feel like every wave coming in was the wave of the day. It was like a glass ceiling that was just shattered. And the next thing you know, it was like 10 levels up. Like, this is the experience I've been waiting my whole life for. You got a pretty cool story. And, um, you know, I know some people know about it, but I, I tell you, I'd like to go back to the start, you know, like how, you know, where your parents, you know, are from, um, where you were born, and then like sort of just leading up to, because I did, did a little bit of history and it looks like, you know, you, you got your parents to move to Hawaii, but uh, let's take us through where you were born and, you know, I'm guessing you probably played soccer, you know, growing up and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely had a different uh, way of growing up compared to my Maui boys in Hawaii. And uh, yeah, I was born in New York, Manhattan. Uh, my mom's from New York and uh, my dad is from Sardinia, Italy. So um, I, I was born in New York and then I grew up in uh, Sardinia till I was uh, 14 years old. And uh, in those years, I was playing soccer. I was actually uh, in the, the team and the younger division of um, one of the, the best soccer uh, teams here in Cagliari that represent in the City A League, uh, Sardinia. So I was, you know, my career was going in that direction as a soccer player. And then uh, I just fell in love with the water, the waves and the wind and started windsurfing, a bit of surfing. And and then once once that started and this passion started growing, I I told my, uh, you know, um, my teammates and, and everybody that I wanted to pursue more my uh, my water sports um career or passion anyway and then from there me and my brother were hooked um my brother nicolo he's you know he's a one and a half year younger than me so uh we definitely been like you know young crazy kids in, in the countryside here in sardinia and i think um those those first bombing hills skateboarding with like you know graveled roads and and dust kind of just set us up for some bigger rides later in life. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, me and my brother looked at each other and said, Hey, if we, if we want to, you know, pursue this passion and, and this yeah. career, we, we need to move to Hawaii. You know, that's, that's the place that's the Mecca of all these water sports. And, uh, luckily enough, my dad has been a journalist, um, for windsurfing, uh, for, 20 plus years and um been to maui many times and uh just it was natural for him to say hey you know what yeah let's let's do a change i got two younger sisters uh julia and gaia and um and it was a good way for them to you know speak english and and learn and and go to school there and because uh we grew up speaking italian and english um with my grandparents living in new york and on my mom's side so uh, it was just, it was a good call. We actually had to uh, get my mom to, after a couple months, she's like thinking about it. And then she's like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's move to Hawaii. And, uh, and sure enough, then we started, um, I started windsurfing a lot at Hokipa and uh, Nicolo started kiteboarding and became prodigy in kiteboarding. And, and I was in between that, like windsurfing and, and surfing, but I had my windsurfs and sponsors that were paying me to travel. And then um, as I was growing up, I was like surfing more and more and bigger and bigger waves. And, and I was like, you know, I, 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 my, my passion and my love was for surfing. And I had to tell my sponsors, you know, I wanna pursue uh, big wave surfing and, yeah. and, and travel the world to surf and not to windsurf. <laughs> yeah. What was it like and, growing uh, up? What was it like growing up in Sardinia? I mean, and were you born, was, was being born in New York um, a plan to, to, to have the U.S. citizenship? Or is it just, that's just where you guys were when you were, when your mum was going to um, give birth or? No, yeah, yeah. I think that was uh, a plan. Um, as we spent time in New York, like the summer times and my grandparents are super close. We like, you know, yeah, we, we were born in, in the U.S. and. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a really um, good thing to travel around the world and having two passports and, uh, you know, dual citizenship. Nowadays, yeah. it's, it's a good thing to have. So, um, yeah, it was definitely planned. 
and um, and yeah, um, a way to like go back and and spend time with my grandparents and all my mom's side, the family, and uh, yeah, and then yeah. Um, what was Maui's it like growing up? up? What was it like growing up in Sardinia? Like, what what was a you know? I'm sure it's a uh, and back then, like 25 years ago, whatever it was. I'm sure it was a lot yeah. smaller than it was now. So. You know, yeah. what, was it, what was it like growing up when you were six, seven years old, you know, going to school and playing soccer and obviously it's surrounded by water. What was a, a general sort of day in the life of Francisco? And, and yeah, it was, um, it was a really um, connected to the elements, you know, the wind and, and, you know, the water. And we were just like uh, five minutes away from, from the sea. And uh, so I had a little moped, like, just just go down get a little session in get in the water and then um after school and then go to soccer practice and that was like my routine and and skateboarding and and uh me and my brother actually um when we were skateboarding we put straps on the skateboard and we were getting like towed behind like my dad tricycle um and we were like going up these hills and going down these hills and doing like big ollies with straps and we were like looking at these um guys in hawaii doing this um on big waves and it was it was kind of like man you know what we're gonna like train and one day we're gonna like do that too and um i think um compared to now it was a real um blessing to be in the countryside and being you know connected to you know water or you know the mountain or valleys whatever and and just playing outside i noticed that um nowadays a lot of kids the new generations they're maybe not as prone to like play outside and they're maybe on their phone or tablets so i think it was definitely a good uh way to grow up and and just you know play with the elements and uh and really enjoy nature that was uh yeah. that was a good blessing for sure and what's the scene like? What's the, what is the water sport scene like in Sardinia? I'm guessing, like you said, there's probably a lot of wind sports. It gets a lot of wind mm -hmm. there. And um, yeah. I'm guessing there's waves as well. So what? Give, give us a rundown of what it's like living on Sardinia with wind and waves. For sure. No, it's, it's a beautiful place. I mean, crystal clear water, unreal places, beaches, and um, mistral wind come, comes down pretty often. So it'll create winds. It's the, this wind that comes from the north. And, um, and it just creates waves and there's wind. So you can go kiteboarding, you can go windsurfing, you can go surfing. And actually the community of all these water sports has been growing exponentially. Like, I mean, since I came back in uh, 2018, I've been blown away at how many people are in the water surfing and, and, uh, and kiteboarding and, and windsurfing. But Definitely the, the surfing world has been picking up big time um, since since back then it was like, you know, you would just surf with maybe like five, six guys. And now it's like people are out there surfing for hours and there's like 40 people in the water. You're like, whoa, is, is this Hawaii or is this Sardinia? You know, it's like it, it's definitely a good place to um, just do water sports. And then, of course, soccer and those sports are like the main sports. But um, I feel like we've been uh, with Leo and other surfers, we've been like really bringing surfing and, and water sports a lot um, into people's homes. And and uh, yeah, and kids are are pumped to get in the water. That's why it's it's been uh, it's been a blessing to live that lifestyle and now enjoying uh, seeing everybody in the water having fun. Yeah, and then you that you said your dad was a journalist for windsurfing but was he a, a like a, a surfer windsurfer himself is that how he, how you guys sort of got into it yeah yeah he was he was a windsurfer he was actually um um yeah more in the windsurfing side of things and and for me it was like i was windsurfing and then I, as i started surfing it just grew on me more and more and when i was in maui i was like like i said i was I was traveling around the world and I was windsurfing for the mags and for, you know, videos and stuff. But I, as soon as I had a chance, I would be surfing and getting barreled and, and just that sensation was what really my passion and what I was hooked on. And, um, you know, I had a 
great time windsurfing, but getting inside the barrel was something that, you know, I couldn't do windsurfing and it was, it was just such a good feeling. And, uh, so I kind of like told my dad too, you know, I'm going to change my career and, uh, and, and, you know, stick to surfing and big wave surfing. And of yeah. course there in Maui, it's, it's like a stepping, you know, you, you know, you're, you're slowly riding bigger and bigger waves. You know, you go from bigger waves to outer reefs to then out from outer reefs to jaws. And it was just, a, a um, you know, a build up throughout the years. And, um, and I was in, um, I was in a, like a time where big wave surfing was having that switch from towing big waves to paddling in. So, um, that time at jaws, when I actually, I was following, following the Brazilian guys that started to paddle, um, jaws a bit more, um, you know, Danilo and Yuri and, uh, Marcio, those guys were like starting to paddle when, when we were towing. And then as, as soon as I seen that happening, I was like, ah, you know, this is, this is interesting. I, I want to try that. And, um, and then I got a board, um, actually a Mavericks board that, um, uh, Mike Neal, a photographer, um, you know, let me buy from him for like 200 bucks. And I got out there and the first wave that I got out at Peahi paddling in no leash, I made this drop and just straightened out and pretty steep drop straightened out. And just that feeling right there was like way better than, you know, 20 uh, toe in waves that were like, you know, same size or whatever. So, yeah. um, I was, I was just hooked right there. And then, and, and then sure enough, um, then the next winter came all came by and, um, that session with, uh, Simon Milosky, Shane Dorian, you know, all the boys, it was just like that switch. And, and I was right there, you know, this Italian boy, just, you know, I've seen all of his like idols in the water and, and being one of them. And, and, you know, I, I'll never forget Sion coming over and I was like, what's up Sion. And everybody was so like, uh, concentrated on getting the waves and Sion was like smiling and like, yeah, like having such a good time. And, and, uh, he came over from, uh, Oahu with Nathan Fletcher and, uh, sure enough, that was the last time I seen him actually. So, um, it was a special day and I got a couple waves and the guys really showed how the sport, you know, could just be, you know, changing the game with paddling in. And it was uh, a session I'll never forget. And it was a session where I felt, okay, you know what? Um, maybe some people could be scared and there is, you know, there is some fear of course, but I felt like, you know, I was meant to be in that place at that time. And, and that was just like, bro, oh, this is, this is my passion. This is what I want to do. I, I'm, I want to get better at this. And, and that's how it went, you know, and you know, 15 years down the line or, or I mean, yeah. 10 years, 12 years, I'm not sure, but it was, uh, what was it? Yeah. yeah. What was it? What was it like? Um, you know, when you first moved to Maui, you know, like, what was it like when you, you know, getting there, you know, trying to insert yourself into the lineup, getting used to all the boys and then just, I mean, and when was, when was that? I know you, you know, you talked about yeah. that shift there, yeah. but you know, I'm sure yeah, that you, um, you guys brought a jet ski probably together, you and your brother and you started, you know, towing in, doing some stuff, but what, what was that yeah. whole process like, you know, like moving from yeah. Sardinia to Hawaii and then, you know, cause you know, you know, everyone's like, it's like, oh, everyone wants to surf big waves or everyone wants to be a yeah, waterman, yeah. you know, but it's yeah, gotta, it's yeah, gotta yeah. be a tough transition, you know, coming from yeah. a little, little island sure. in Sardinia to Maui, you know, for sure. No. Yeah. It was definitely, um, a, a big change, but, um, was ready for it. And, I, I went to school. I went to Kinke as Kinke Kalike um, school uh, up country, and that was just like getting integrated and meeting everybody, and and uh, you know becoming friends with everybody. That was like the first step to really feel the Maui vibe. And uh, you know, I was 14 years old, and um, and and so from that. Um, then I did a couple of years in school and then, uh, I got my GED with Clay Marzo cause we were like traveling and stuff. And, and, uh, and as soon as I got my GED, I had 
more time to travel and, and focus on, on my career. And, um, and I just, I just remember, um, going from Hokipa, um, uh, to, you know, uh, Honolulu Bay and these small waves, I mean, smaller waves, um, and getting, you know, getting used to that. And luckily I had some friends, um, from, from just going to school and, and from, uh, my, my parents, friends and, um, and yeah, it was, you know, it was, um, it was a good thing that I, I was speaking English and, um, and Italian. It was, it, it was a fun, um, it was a fun time. Um, we had a lot of fun when we were young and, and, uh, sure enough, I had to like, you know, sh- show everybody that was, I was, uh, confident to ride waves and, and show them that I can ride bigger waves. And then, um, I'll never forget, we got a jet ski with, um, uh, couple of my buddies, um, Zach Sato, it, it wasn't actually with my brother. It was, um, with a couple of friends that I went to school with. And, uh, my brother was actually kiteboarding and he was like prodigy kiteboarding and he was in his world. And, um, and actually he didn't really want me to go kiteboarding. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll stick to surfing and windsurfing. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and then, um, um, they, uh, they got, we got a jet ski all together. And uh, we went out. Um, I'll never forget this swell that was like uh, um, January fourth. There was like a huge swell in uh, two thousand eight or two thousand seven, and uh, and we went out with the jet ski uh, to the secret spot um, on the east side of Maui, and uh, and that was our first tow in uh waves and um we got barreled we got like some sick lines and and uh and that was yeah the beginning of towing for me um i think i was like 18 i was like 18 years old and um yeah you know i started uh a bit late compared to the other guys but still like you know focusing on what i had uh dreamed of and uh and everything was slowly getting there, you know, from my uh, um, skills to the possibilities and connections and and friendships and um, and yeah, sure enough. Then from Sprex, uh, from Outer Sprex, then I went to Jaws uh, to Peahi, and um, and then since then it's been it's been a yeah. chase all my life of trying to get the right <laughs> ways. I mean, <laughs> you yeah. know, you know what I mean? What, what was his, um, I was going to say, like, it's a good, like for any young kids coming up, especially from, you know, other countries that aren't so, you know, surf crazy, you know, like what was it like to, you know, your, your parent were your parents supportive of you trying to chase this dream? Because, you know, at, at, you know, big wave surfing nearly never really had a ton of money involved in it, you know? So it's like, yeah. How, how do you tell your parents oh, I want to do this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to travel and and do all and do all this, spend all this money to try and yeah. chase yeah. this dream that's uh, it sort of seems unattainable, you know? It's uh, yeah. And then you know, did, did you get some sponsors along the way to help? How how was that in those early years trying to chase that dream of being a professional big wave surfer? Yeah, um, I yeah, I, I definitely struggled to travel around, and you know, I did put a lot of my money into traveling. It was, it was my, uh, my way of investing in my career. And, um, I think it needs to start from just your passion and love of the sport and, and just being in the elements and being in this, in these situations where the ocean is, is raw and powerful. So you first got to see if, if you're built up, built for that, you know, mentally and physically, and then as soon as, you know, you start training, and you, you're getting better and better. I think um, a good way of uh, getting better is is going to places where you can learn from other people that are already at the top and 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 being in those places where um, you can put in your time and and really practice in in that sport. And um, it was it was definitely hard. I mean, I did have some sponsors, but. They've been, um, yeah, there wasn't much money. Like I, I definitely was working on side jobs and, and, uh, you know, doing other work to fund my, my passion and, 
and and um i i remember my mom was like are you sure you want to keep on doing this like are you are you looking at you know future like how are you gonna like live you know and um and my brother was like you know you gotta just believe in him he's he's gonna he's gonna like at some point he's gonna like make some like big results or like you know win something or and my dad believed in me i think they didn't really support me financially they gave me that chance to like go to hawaii which is huge at 14 years old but then they moved back to um italy to sardinia and me and my brother stayed out in hawaii living on our own and and uh you know we were pretty um self um i would say me and my brother from from when we were young we we were um on our own like from the little sponsors that were you know giving us the possibility to you know chase our dreams we were just right away at 15 we we're out of the house i was with my girlfriend and uh living with my girlfriend and and then uh, my brother was like living somewhere else and then we would come home so i think um you have to be ready to like be on your own and, and chase your dreams you can't always rely on your parents and um so you know we didn't come from a family that had a backing that could you know say hey you know we're gonna let you do this and try this try that we were like okay we want to do this and and uh and we're gonna do it and you know either either you guys like it or not we're gonna do this you know and um i think um like i said it's 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 all about enjoying the process and 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 just really enjoying nature and um and that's that's how everything then came you know then then when i won that xxl wave that just snowballed into all kinds of different um possibilities yeah. but uh i was i was there like you know i would get in the final and i would never win or i would get some like you know pretty big waves or and i would never get to the point where i could win some money or anything and that was like for you know eight to nine yeah almost 10 years and then finally you know things started happening and um you know there's yeah. there's a bit of luck there's a bit of uh everything but consistency i think is what will bring you to the results and uh and yeah that's that's yeah. how it is i think in, so, in all yeah. sports and all all sides of life is you know you put in your time and some results can come right away and your life can be easier right away or you can be working for it for many years and then finally like something happens that yeah 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 well who was who was some of you like who who did you look up to growing up you know obviously moving to maui there's lots of lots of in, insane you know big wave surfers surfers watermen water women over there so who were some of the people that you looked up to and inspired to to be like yeah i was i was inspired by shane doran a lot since since i was young and and um and shane has been like you know those those years of uh pushing the limits of big wave surfing and you know from towing big chokes to you know paddling to jaws or mavs or shane was definitely a guy that i looked up to and uh just humble like i just loved his way of you know staying humble but showing his john john florence is another example like somebody that's like stays humble and and just shows his, his but they're uh, alpha they're alpha talent. male in the water you know, yeah that, that's 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 what i would say with shane is that you know he's yeah, mellow, super this and that, but then you know when then, he yeah. sees you see what he's he wants on. in the water and yeah. he goes for yeah. it. There's nothing stopping him, and and it's yeah. just like get out, get out of the way. I'm coming through, yeah. you know. And you yeah, and you sense yeah, yeah, that yeah. vibe, and you sort of just. You know, there's been a lot of times where I've been. It's crazy. There's some, some sessions where you're just right next to someone on a ton of waves, like that El Nino year. Like there was yeah, like four or five waves where. If he wasn't on it, I was, I was, I was on it. But he was just in a better spot, always, you know, like just from always, experience. Yeah. But, but yeah. that guy is just so good. And I saw some like spots where I'm like, oh my god, like he's not going to get this. And then he just manhandles it and just yeah. puts his front foot down and like just yeah. and will just stick that thing. Just such so committed. It's unbelievable. And, yeah, um, yeah. I was, uh, I was, he was like the guy that I was like, wow, you know. 
I I want to I want to be like him one day like or I, I I'm definitely like feeding off his energy of yeah like you said when he's in the water and he's on there's like nobody stopping him like deeper than everybody just just fully committed on his 10-0 rhino chaser just oh like yeah. and and then at the same time then he would you know he would show like you know um some he would give me some props like i'll never forget like he posted a, like a shot of me doing like a super steep drop backside at, at jaws and he was like giving me props for like riding backside and and you know that was such a boost for me that it was better than winning an event or like you know somebody that i looked up for so many years giving me props it was like okay, I'm, a, I'm on the right, you know, I'm on the uh, right side of uh, things. And uh, yeah, thank yeah. you, Shane, for that. And, yeah. uh, and and for just pushing the limits of uh, big wave surfing. Yeah, um, sure. He sure has been a great role model for a lot of people. And uh, and continue. even like uh, all around, you know, all around, he's like good on short, on, on small waves, you know, like, and uh, I think I'm, I'm more of a, um, I like to um enjoy the elements um more than uh anything like i just love the power of nature and just being there and just you know riding and being one with nature but uh you know there's there's so many possibilities in life that um you know i wanted to try like you know skydiving and i'm like on a wingsuit or you know just cliff diving or or just all different sides of life, you know, in the air, water, and uh, mountains. I went to like Alaska snowboarding. So I like to change it up and 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 feel, you know, the, these different sports. That at some point, you know, there's some um, some ways to like learn from some other sports. Um, and um, yeah, you know, sometimes I think like I could be focusing only on one thing, but life is too short to not you know, explore and, and, and feel other sensations and visuals and, and, yeah. uh, yeah. Have you had that? I mean, I was going to say, cause I know you have done the, the, all the wingsuits and all the, all that crazy shit I, I would never do, but, um, <laughs> have, have you, have you always, you know, have you, have you always had that little, you know, that little switch in your head? You know, like that, that cra- the crazy kid, you know, I can imagine the, oh, there goes the Pachella brothers again. Those kids are crazy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm sure that was, yeah, like, well, was well, like growing up. Uh, we definitely, um, when we were really young, me and my brother, they would call us the hooligans because we were like show up at, at, at people's uh, houses and like friends and we were, like climb things and like, you know, just like get on trees and people are like, oh you're not scared and then like my parents are like nah it's all right they'll, they'll learn you know they'll learn <laughs> <laughs> so uh we had which is important if you're trying to you know pursue that kind of like extreme sports is having parents that will let you you know live and try things of course like controlling a bit you know your, your risk assessment but like not being like too like scared and saying like, no, you can't do this. Or like, no, be careful with that. You know, like it's, it's important to have um, parents that when you're young and you're like experiencing, they, they give you the chance to like try things. And yeah, sometimes you get hurt, but like sometimes you learn the right way instead of always being scared of it. Yeah. Um, And what, what, what have you, what have you taken from the, the snowboarding, the, the cliff diving, the, the wingsuit and stuff. I mean, does, is that, uh, you know, does jumping out of a plane make surfing big waves easy or easier or does paddling out the Mavericks still scare the shit out of you more than oh, yeah. jumping out of an airplane with a wingsuit? You know I mean? What, oh, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a cool thing that I haven't experienced. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, what, what, what's that like? Oh, yeah, no, uh, I know. I, yeah, Mavericks, surfing Mavs or surfing some big heavy waves. Is, is scarier than jumping out of a plane with a wingsuit. Uh, then if you're talking about mountains and stuff and doing base, that's another thing. But I think what you can bring from doing these other sports is, uh, you know, you're, you're, training, you're trained physically, but mentally you're training yourself to say, okay, here I'm like concentrated 110%. There's nothing else 
this is my 30 seconds, a minute, a minute, whatever, um, that I'm going to give it my all and I got to be concentrated on every little thing. And snowboarding as well, like Alaska, when I went heliboarding or when I go big mountains, you're like, you know, keeping your speed, you're looking at every little dip and every little thing that translates into big wave surfing. You're going super fast and you're looking at what the wave is doing, how it's morphing and what's it going to do. And, and you're reading all of it in, you know, every second is like super important. Or half yeah, a second. Seemed, so yeah, it seems like, like those, that moment, those moments in time, whether you're letting go of the rope at Chopu and you've got ten seconds yeah, to just yeah. do everything hundred percent right, or you're jumping out of a plane, or whatever it may be, you're about to you know put go yeah. into the half the big half pipe skating. You know, it's that yeah. finding yeah, that exactly. flow, flow state for like that whatever amount of time it is, and just being so in tune and connected that you're you know, you actually exactly. do it well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and building and training your, your mind to, you know, tap everything out and just being in that moment, super concentrated. And uh, like you said, in that flow state, the more you like spend time getting into that flow state, the more you can just tap into it, you know, at, at, at certain times. And, uh, and big wave surfing is, it's like that, you know, it's, it's, uh, Actually, sometimes big wave surfing, you're waiting for the waves and you're kind of, you know, spending time uh, waiting for the waves. But as soon as the wave comes and you're fully committed, you're, you're, you know, there's no distractions. There's no like holding back. You know, if you're going, you're going. And yeah. um, and uh, I think that's important to like, you know, catch those big waves or saying, yeah, I'm going to go on this wave towing wise or. Um, it's those split second decisions at the end, uh, that are the ones that could change your life, you know, or you could have yeah. the right of your life. So yeah. I'm still, you know, I'm still, uh, looking at, you know, getting some waves that, um, I've been like dreaming of for so many years, but I think that's the process of, uh, chasing all these waves in these places around the world and, and uh and and learning so much it's a learning curve all your life you know there's so much like i never came in from a session like yeah you know i had that like i was i always learn what i can change or what i can get better at and how, what mistakes i did and kind of assess my se session and i think that's what uh big wave surfing is just unreal for that it's uh you're you're always learning but it's it's such a good feeling when you get a good wave and and uh friendships too i mean i, I think yeah. another beautiful thing about big wave surfing or chasing these waves around the world is the friendships that you build throughout the years and and being able to feel at home in in another side of the world and you know you show up and and your friend is like yeah let's go and shows you all the secret spots or like the most amazing spots and same thing is when they come to my place or my home is it's this like uh, sharing of knowledge of places uh, that I yeah. cherish. Yeah. No, I remember, I remember like a perfect example of that is I remember when I was lucky enough to win Nazare and you were there ch and carried, picked me up and chaired me up the beach and you know, all the boys are you know, spraying with Corona and stuff, you know, and like, that's just a, like a certain thing, you know, like I could, you know, you could tell that people were genuinely stoked, gen, you know, genuinely yeah. stoked for, for me, you know, and, and as, as I would be for someone else, you know, if they had won yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, cause it's tough, right? Because you, you it's, we don't get many opportunities, um, yeah. you know, and, you know, like even with like the Jaws contest, uh, you know, I know that you've been in that a few years, but yeah, you know, even just to get into that contest is such a yeah. tough gig. And then, you get in and you don't do well for a few years, then you might fall off and, you know, someone else jumps in and you don't have it for a year. And it's yeah. just, it's, it's, it's a rough go to what was that like for you? Cause I know you, I know that's sort of how that transpired yeah. for you. You know, you finally got in and I think there was yeah. a few years where you just like didn't get out of the heat yeah. and it's just, it's yeah. frustrating because you just want to do well to, to get to the next event and then maybe get on tour for the whole year. So you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely it's it's a uh, it's a hard um, it's a hard one to swallow because you would you know um, for example one um, one year like I did I didn't I didn't do good I didn't get out of my heat 
And, and I was so pissed. And the next morning the contest was going and I was like, I was like crack of dawn out there. Like I want to get my wave. And, and, uh, and actually I got a sick barrel right before the contest started. And it was like, yeah, you know, I'm not in the comp, but you know, I'm hungry and I want it and I want to be here. And, and I, I know that I can do it, but yeah, in that time frame, you know, things can not go your way or you can be super close. And if you don't really win it, you're not going to make it sometimes. So it was, um, it, it, it is a hard sport to like really build up your confidence. And, but, um, I think we get back to putting in your time and, and really showing that you want to do it traveling around the world, you know, chasing swells and, and put in performances around the world and, and not only one wave. Um, I think that's what has, has, uh, has been like a help for me is, uh, being able to like practice in different waves as well. And, um, but you know, Peahi is, is, is yeah. my home spot. It, it'll always yeah. be, I, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, I feel good out at, at Jaws and, uh, and I, w- I want to keep on dreaming of that, you know, perfect ride or, uh, you know, big barrel or, you know, winning a contest out there. Like I, I, I still have those dreams in me and, and, and I believe that I can do it. And, um, and yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's hard though, because, uh, you got to keep your head up when, when there's moments that you're like bummed on yourself that you didn't yeah. get that result. And, uh, but well, and I think it just it. goes to show, I think it just goes to show for any young kid or young girl, young guy that wants to be a big wave surfer and potentially, you know, get in advance and chase swells is that you just have to be very resilient. You have yeah. to, be, you know, you have to have thick skin you have to be yeah. resilient. You have to be willing to sacrifice a lot, you know, like whether it's money, savings, you know, um, family, birthdays, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, all that sort yeah, of stuff, sure. you know, and, and you have to yeah. just keep turning up because you do eventually see the people that, that do keep showing up, do eventually get them their moment to shine, you know, and yeah. like you did yeah. um, at uh, when you got the double XL award for that wave yeah. in Nazare, you know, and, yeah. and that, yeah. that was your moment. And, and to be honest, like if yeah. we're going to fast forward to someone that's career has just gone ups and down sideways, backwards and forwards, you know, like from, from all those tribulations and trials and tribulations that we spoke about to, to winning, you know, cause I think that you, you won the same year. It was at the Huntington beach, right? It was like 2015, yep. I think. Yeah. Right. So no, it was 2017. It, 17 that, that's right yeah yeah, yeah and then, it was, uh, uh, i was there i was i was in portugal we'd gone out that morning with garrett and it was so yeah. radical and we we're coming in and then you guys were going out and we're like oh man it's crazy out there and so we come in and had some breakfast we actually went back up to the hill and posted up and as i was walking over the hill i saw you get that wave and i was like oh man like and then there was a, a couple other big waves out there that day too but obviously i was just like wow that that thing just may have won the double XL award, you know, and we didn't know <laughs> who it was at the time. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but you know, it ended up being you and, and you won that won some cash. And then yeah. I think what's really interesting for Annie is, is like, yeah, it's like you get, you got that, you got on tour and then, then you made a, you made a shift and I don't know, you can tell us how that happened, but you decided to, I think, put your time and energy into going back home to Italy back to Sardinia and then trying to, you know, represent Italy, look at sponsors from over there. So how, how from, from winning the biggest wave award, because I know when you went back there, that's, you got started to get a lot of attention. So take us through, you know, from winning that award, the opportunities and why you have sort of transitioned into basing yourself back in Italy um, for the time being. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was, it was a blessing. Yeah. Because, um, as I won biggest wave of the year, I was, you know, as a finalist in the five ride of the years and, and, and I got a performance of the year. I got like, I think third or fourth behind you. And, and, and that was like, I got on tour the next year and, um, it was, yeah, it was a big moment that, um, I did chase a lot of swells. Like I went to Australia, Chile. Um, I went to a lot of places before that wave in Nazareth, 
So I felt like I, I did put a lot of time chasing big swells and I got rewarded with that wave of Nazare. And, you know, I actually can't thank enough uh, Ashi Munyan that Axie, believed with yeah. me. Yeah, actually, actually was like, you know, we're, we're going to get some, some big waves today. And we believed it. And, uh, and uh, we went out and stayed out, you know, um, pretty much almost all day. And it was pretty hardcore. But, you, you know, you got to get out of your comfort zone and you got to, yeah, you got to put in your time. And then from there, it really did snowball into going on TV shows, um, big TV shows. And then from those TV shows, I did some like... Um, some, dancing with I, the like, Stars? Did you do like a Dancing with yeah, the Stars? Yeah, I did Dancing with the Stars that like, you know, it was, a, it was like good money and a good like possibility for me to bring our world of like surfing into the mainstream here in Italy and, uh, you know, it was like a couple months and there too was just like getting out of my comfort zone. You know, I, I knew what I could do in big wave surfing, but this was like a, a possibility to that you only get once, you know, and you can only do it once. And, and I, you know, I had good manager that picked up this, this, uh, TV show and, and sure enough, that was like a pretty crazy experience because I didn't know how to dance and. And there I was like learning how to dance and every Saturday night I was going live with, you know, like 4 million people watching me dance. So I was like, okay, you know, let's, let's go with the flow, you know, let's, let's ride this wave. And, uh, and, you know, after that, you know, I, then I did another traveling TV show all around, all through Africa. And that was another amazing experience. Uh, Pekino Express, this was another thing that like opened my mind, you know, and, uh, and um, and after that, it just really snowballed into sponsors do, wanting to do, um, you know, commercials or or you know sponsor me and 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 it was a good time to be in Italy and and you know take advantage of that and so that's why I was like, okay, I can just spend my time in in Maui and Hawaii like those winter months that are important and then spend the rest of the time here. And, and, you know, traveling around here. And I think that was a really good um, decision in, in the sense of, you know, having a, a bit of money to, you know, buy a house or, or you know, put some money aside. Because um, with big wave surfing, yeah, I did win some money. But it was kind of like getting travel the money, money back from all the traveling, travel money and, and being able to travel again. So, and then... From that, I figured, you know, I'm here. Sardinia is like pretty close to all the spots in Europe. And uh, and why not spend time here and chase swells from here? And uh, it was a good thing, you know, like I can be in Nazare in like five hours and and um, if I get the right connection. But um, it was it was a good change and a good way to show all the sardinian and italian people myself because i was always gone in a way and they would always see just news of me doing things but just being here and just being around people stoked and and like feeding off this like energy it was um it was it was good for me and uh and now i got my girl over here and um um i'm i'm definitely uh happy to spend time and I'm close to my grandparents. It's like I did have a bunch of friends over here that I didn't spend much time um, while I was gone for so many years. And it was good. You know, it was a good change. Uh, you know, I love Maui and it always be, you know, my my home. I, I mean, I feel like a Maui boy when I go back. I, you know, nothing has changed or, you know, little things has changed. But uh, being able to bring that... Um, lifestyle and that way of uh, living here in Sardinia has been uh, has been good for me and I yeah, want to keep doing that maybe spend maybe spend a bit more time in Maui um this next winter I only did like two and a half months uh but I went to Mavs a couple times um this winter and uh yeah you you gotta be ready at the same time like I, I sometimes I get so many jobs over here that I'm like yeah like I'm doing good, but like I still want to, you know, be like riding big waves and chasing my dreams, and and so now it's like uh, 
act of like choosing the right jobs and 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 you know saying you know I gotta go and be careful <laughs> what you wish. Be careful what you wish for, mate. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> but it's exactly. it's awesome. I, I I applaud you, man, because you it's very easy to get stuck um, doing the yeah. same thing. You know, thinking it's gonna happen. Yep, it's gonna keep happening. But to get an opportunity and to get outside your comfort zone again, to move to yeah. Sardinia, which you would just go, that's crazy. Like, what, why am I going to move there from a big wave surfer? But, but you know, yeah. to to get those opportunities, well, you do surf to get the here, backing, huh? yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. But 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 you know, what I mean, like it's it's you took that opportunity. Yeah. Now you're making some good money. You've got you know you've got a future. And and you've yeah. set yourself up to now where you can pick and choose, and you can get back to, yeah, to ch- chasing yeah. swells and doing what you love to do, you know, by building yeah. a foundation, you know, which yeah, exactly, you know, you know, being a bit more more like easy on like you know, am I gonna make it in the next month? Like you know, um, just uh, I I got a bit more uh, of uh, secure, like just a lot easier um, mental, like not stressing so much and. Uh, and then at the same time, I, I've been seeing so many kids wanting to get into water sports and, uh, you know, from surfing to kiteboarding. And, and, and I, I was like, okay, now is the time for me to give back to the kids, the newer generation that want to get into this. Like now I want to, you know, I, I got, I got, um, I just did a school and like association with like, you know, uh, water sports, you know, teaching water sports and teaching like mental and physical preparation for, you know, if it can be big wave surfing or any other sports, it can be a buildup of, um, learning and uh, tools and, um, and, and, and just pretty much having fun in nature and getting them connected back into the elements and instead of like staying at home on their phone, you know, or, yeah. or just playing video games. So I think it's, it's all coming around and um, I, I feel so good when uh, kids are having fun in the water and I, I, and I brought them and I gave them that possibility and, yeah. and their, their smile is something that that's really satisfying that I'm, I'm, I'm learning to enjoy that and, and and wanting to bring that more and more and having an event or whatever it is. But, um, I feel like, you know, what I've learned and what the ocean has given me all these years, I'm, I'm, I'm now starting to like give it back to the newer generation. That's how yeah. the cycle goes. And, uh, I'm stoked. It feels I'm good. Really stoked. It feels good to, yeah, feels it feels good really to give good. back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So sure. what, so what, so what's the next five years look like for Francisco? If you, if you sort of just sit back and go, sounds like you're still hungry, you know, hungry to chase yeah. swells. And, for you know, sure. if they're happy, if we ever get back to having events again, um, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, where do you see yourself? You know, like how old are you now? I'm uh 34, almost 35, 34. So yeah, you're in the I, prime, you're in the prime and you're fit and healthy. So yeah, um, I, I'm, a, I'm, um, my goal is still, it hasn't changed. You know, I, I would love to, you know, uh, win a ride of the year or get some really special waves under my belt. And, um, and, you know, chasing is pretty much being at the right place at the right time. So really, you know, looking at swells and what they're doing and what, uh, where, where I can go. And, um, uh, and there's a lot of waves that I, I, I really want to get good um that are just firing and what they're doing is like the top notch so it's still chasing swells and um enjoying nature enjoying the ocean and and giving and giving a good input for the newer generations of like you know let's learn how to like be um more more eco-friendly on our ways of living and you know learning different ways of, you know, having a smaller footprint in, in this world and, uh, and living a simple life, but at the same time being able to say, okay, I'm going to be there in two days and it's going to be huge and, and ready for it. So I definitely want to still compete. I still want to, you know, put, put in, um, some great performances around the world and just, you know, living life to, to the max, you know? It's, yeah, uh, man. It's, it's pretty much, uh, I don't have much money. 
Yeah, I don't have much money, but I think uh, my my richness is those experiences and those those uh, views that uh, Mother Nature gives us, and uh, that commitment that we have will bring us to enjoy and live our dreams. For sure. What, For sure. One last thing. What would you say to a a young kid that was is growing up like yourself in Sardinia or, or any other sort of place like that that has big dreams what what would be your advice what would you be what would you be advice to the him or her um my advice would be um you know learn how to get out of your comfort zone because that's what's then going to bring you into some uh, like life changing experiences and and uh feelings that only those kind of sports or or moments in nature can bring you and I think uh, getting reconnected to nature, that's something that's really important and that's going to bring you a lot of joy is, um, you know, there's all this digital world. There's all this like system that wants you to like do certain things, but getting out in nature and enjoying and having fun, that's the most important thing is enjoying your time and enjoying the process and yeah, have big goals, big dreams. Believe in yourself, but learn every step of the way and uh, and have fun. I think, yeah. Well, that's and, a, and, and 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 um, uh, and and actually learn from your your pioneers or look up and learn what the best people in the world do and 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 try to emulate and 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 learn from them because you know it, it can speed up your process of learning if if you're around people that are already doing that a hundred percent. You know. Yeah, that's, yeah, for sure. That's my tip. Yeah. Well, Franny, um, I'm super stoked for you, buddy. I, you know, I've seen the hard work. I think we've all been there. Um, I, I, I think it's amazing you how you've been able to zig and zag to where you are now. And um, you know, I know you had a little bit of an injury last year, but saw you out at Mavs yeah. getting back into it. And uh, yeah, I look, for, exactly. look that forward was a big... to yeah, I look forward yeah. to seeing you back out in the lineup and sharing some waves this year. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, thanks. I look man. up thanks. to you, Jamie. <laughs> I look up to you as well. It's not only Shane Doran. I, I look up to you big time because you're a guy that's put in his time and, and showed how the sport of big wave surfing can evolve and, and get better at. And and you're still, you know, you got to keep that young kid inside of you. But then you exactly. got like this beautiful family and uh, enjoying life and the small things in nature and simple things in nature can bring you a lot of joys. And there's not that much uh better than it just enjoying the elements and family around uh, i think that's some of the best feelings in life yeah man it's uh it's all balance it's all a balance and we gotta yeah. be able to tap in and tap out of that mental yeah. space when we need to and i think a, a big thing too is being able to switch off and relax and and let your mind be yeah. free and then be able to switch yeah. it back on i think that's a, a big skill that people can learn as well but um yeah. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm stoked for you um, and look forward to seeing, thanks, you, seeing you in the lineup, buddy. And uh, thanks for being on the late drop, brother. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks to you. I'll see you in the water, brother. <laughs> you.